Good afternoon, everyone. On behalf of Simulations Plus, I welcome you to our first quarter fiscal year 2020 financial results conference call and webinar. Hosting the call today is Simulations Plus CEO, Sean O'Connor, and the company's CFO, John Knizel. An opportunity to ask questions will follow today's presentations. You may send written questions using the questions pane in the control panel, or you may use the hand raising icon on your control panel to ask your questions directly. Please be sure to enter the unique audio pen displayed when you join the call. Before beginning, I'd like to remind everyone that with the exception of historical information, the matters discussed in this presentation are forward-looking statements that involve a number of risks and uncertainties. The actual results of the company could differ significantly from those statements. Factors that can cause or contribute to such differences include, but are not limited to, continued demand for the company's products, competitive factors, the company's ability to finance future growth, the company's ability to produce and market new products in a timely fashion, the company's ability to continue to attract and retain skilled personnel, and the company's ability to sustain or improve the current level of productivity. Further information in the company's risk factors contained in the company's quarterly and annual reports and filed with the Securities and Exchange Commission. With that said, I'm going to turn the call to the CEO, Sean O'Connor. Sean? Thank you, Cameron. Simulations Plus benefited from continued strong execution on our objectives and unanticipated client-driven accelerated timing on several projects to deliver growth that exceeded our planned targets in the first quarter. The 25% top-line growth and 11 cent per share earnings represents a strong start to our fiscal year. As most of you know, over the last six quarters, we have increased our investment in several key initiatives, most notably sales and marketing, with the goal of increasing our historical growth rate of 10 to 15%, to a range of 15 to 20%. These investments yielded encouraging results as we navigated fiscal 2019. For the full year 2019, we delivered 15% growth and in the fourth quarter, our growth rate was 20%. We improved on that further in the first quarter of fiscal 2020, delivering 25% revenue growth. This result was largely due to the acceleration of several projects at our North Carolina operation resulting in higher than expected revenue in the first quarter. While we are not anticipating growth to maintain these levels throughout fiscal 2020, these results validate our expectations of 15 to 20% growth for the full year. Our increased revenue growth has been driven by both our software and consulting businesses. Software revenues grew 12% during the first quarter with consulting growth for the quarter at 40%. Gross, mar gross margins remain strong at 72%, slightly up on gross margins of 71% and 72% in the first and fourth quarters of fiscal 2019, respectively. This was achieved despite richer mix of lower margin consulting revenues for the quarter, in addition to higher than usual pass-through CRO revenues in our RTP division, which carry very low margins. This result supports our belief that we can maintain or improve overall gross margin despite changes in revenue mix and the cost of personnel through price management and operational efficiencies. Demand remains strong our, uh, across our software products and consulting services. Through our prior acquisitions of Cognigen and Dillysim, as well as our more recent focus on recruiting more senior scientific consultants, we have built a more comprehensive array of expertise that is helping us capture additional consulting opportunities beyond our historical competencies. It is appropriate this quarter to highlight the progress made in, an R, in our RTP division. Its year-over-year -year revenue growth for the quarter was 88%, an incredible achievement for a division of only 17 staff. When we acquired Dilly Sim in fiscal 2018, its product portfolio consisted of the product DILISEM, the quantitative systems toxicology model for assessment of drug-induced drug liver injury, and NAFLDSEM, a non-alcoholic fatty liver disease, disease model. From that starting point, we have leveraged our quantitative systems pharmacology expertise with internal, grant-based, and pharmaceutical company funding to significantly expand our therapeutic coverage and sources of revenue from this group. Today, model building efforts and revenue are sourced additionally from Renasem, a model to assess drug-induced kidney injury, IPFSEM, 
a model for idiopathic pulmonary fibrosis, and RADISEM, a model for acute radiation syndrome. This expansion has taken us into new therapeutic areas and new customers, expanding the marketing opportunity for our QSP expertise. As the models mature, software revenues from licensing the models will supplement the consulting service revenues, and more therapeutic expansion opportunities are on the horizon. Our ongoing investments, specifically in sales and marketing, have increased our SG&A spending in absolute dollars. Due to the higher revenue growth, SG&A expenses as a percentage of revenue declined in the first quarter versus the fourth quarter of fiscal 2019 and was up 1% from the first quarter of fiscal 2019. We continue to forecast full year SG&A expenses at approximately 35% of total revenue. SG&A expense as a percentage of revenues will fluctuate quarterly based upon the seasonality of our revenues. Over time, we anticipate these expenses moving back towards our historical percentage of revenue at about 31 to 32% of revenue. Turning to our first quarter results by division, in our Lancaster division, overall revenue was up 13% for the quarter. Software revenue grew 15% for the quarter versus last year. Consulting revenues were slightly down 2% for the quarter versus last year. With regard to Lancaster's detailed metrics, 69% of our revenue was from renewals, 12% from new licenses, and 19% from consulting. Our renewal rates were 85% based on accounts and 98% based upon fees. Our licensed units of 235 were up 12% year over year. We added 16 new commercial companies and 22 nonprofit groups. We currently have projects with 26 companies and nine funded collaborations. Since the beginning of the fiscal year, we have announced five significant funded collaborations. These projects expand the functionality of our software offerings and further differentiate us within the industry. First, we entered into a new collaboration agreement with Bayer to advance the ADME predictor machine learning software for use with integrated drug discovery workflows. Collaboratively, we will develop improved structure and tatamer handling capabilities that will support data integrity across the different Bayer discovery platforms. Second, we entered into a new funded collaboration with a large pharmaceutical company to enhance the PK Plus software. This collaboration followed a rigorous process where the pharmaceutical partner evaluated sim Simulations Plus and several competitors, ultimately selecting PK Plus as the pharmacokinetics toxicokinetics modeling program to support the internal data platform that connects their global teams. Third, we entered into a new funded collaboration with a large pharmaceutical company to modify the mechanistic oral absorption model in GastroPlus to support gastrointestinal disease research. Fourth, we entered into a new funded collaboration with a clinical stage biotech partner to develop an intra-articular delivery model in GastroPlus. And finally, we entered a new funded collaboration agreement with a large pharmaceutical partner to develop the virtual bioequivalence trial simulator module for GastroPlus. These collaborations continue our history of leveraging client input and funding to enhance and reduce the overall R&D costs associated with maintaining our industry-leading software products. Despite the, despite the flat service revenues in the division in the first quarter, collaboration closures year-to-day provide confidence in achieving our full-year revenue targets. We ended the quarter with 41 full-time employees at our Lancaster division, up one from 40, in the prior quarter and up four from 37 last year. In Buffalo, we achieved 16% revenue growth for the quarter. As a reminder, growth at the Buffalo division has increased from 8% in fiscal 2018 to 19% in fiscal 2019, and we have started fiscal 2020 with a solid quarter. Demand remains high for this type of PKPD consulting services that we offer in the marketplace. In support of our growth expectations for the fiscal year, we had a successful recruiting quarter, adding five new employees to the consulting staff 
a net of four with one attrition. While associated recruiting and onboarding costs impacted the division's profitability this quarter, we believe we are well positioned to meet our client demand and growth expectations for the fiscal year. We ended the quarter with 51 full-time employees at our Buffalo division, up from 49 in the prior quarter and up from 42 last year. Our RTP division delivered that 88% revenue growth for the quarter. As I mentioned earlier, this division benefited from two significant projects that were accelerated at the customer's request to meet development and regulatory needs. The team at DillySim deserves special credit for going above and beyond this quarter. As I mentioned in our fourth quarter call, this division is operating at full capacity in support of several large collaborations with, for new QSP platforms in various disease areas and in addition to other client consulting projects. The request to pull forward two projects required additional hours and tremendous effort. This effort, plus the comparison to a re relatively modest year ago quarter, drove the 80%, 88% revenue growth in the quarter and was the key factor in our consolidated 25% growth overall. While we cannot expect continued growth at these levels, we do expect continued significant growth. And to that end, we have recruited two additional to the team who are starting this and next month and continue to seek additional reinforcements for the group in uh, North Carolina. Job well done, RTP. Let me now turn the call over to John to review the detailed financial results. John? All right, appreciate it, Sean. Um, our consolidated uh, net revenues for the first quarter of the fiscal year 20 were up, as Sean said, 25% or 24.8, um, or 1.9 million to 9.4 million compared to 7.5 in the prior year period. By division, Lancaster's revenues were up 13% to 4.9 million. Buffalo's revenues were up 16% to 2.4, and RTP revenues were up 88% to 2.1 million over the last period of year, a year ago. Gross profit increased 26.7% to 6.8 million, representing a 71.9% margin in the first quarter of fiscal year 20, compared to 5.3 or 70.8 gross margin in the same quarter last year. Costs of revenues have increased by approximately 443,000 compared to the prior year due to labor related costs of approximately 399,000 and direct contract expenses of 81,000 for testing at Dilly Sim and RTP. As a percentage of revenues, costs of revenues were down slightly to 28.1% of total revenues compared to 29.2% of total revenues in the first quarter of fiscal year 19. SG&A expenses were 3.5 million or 37.4% of revenue in the first quarter of this year, an increase of approximately 794,000 or 29.2% compared to 2.7 million or 36.1% of revenue in the first quarter of 19. The increase in SG&A expense was primarily the result of increases in salary and wages and labor related costs as the company has grown headcount to support revenue growth. In addition to labor, we saw an increase in year over year costs and professional fees insurance expenses and director's fees as the board is now made up of all paid non-management members. Research and development costs for the most recent fiscal quarter were just over a million dollars. Of this total, approximately 526 was expensed and 507 was capitalized. Overall, we increased our R&D spend in the first quarter by a fiscal year 20 by 49,000 compared to the prior year period. The expense portion of 526 in the first quarter of 20 was roughly flat compared to 530 in the year ago quarter. However, as a percentage of revenue, R&D decreased to 5.6% uh, from 7% in the first quarter of 19. Income from operations for the first quarter of the year was 2.7 million up 632,000 or 30 0.3% compared to 2.1 million in the year ago quarter. 
Our provision for income taxes for the first quarter of 20 was 675,000, an effective rate of 24.7%, compared to 486, an effective rate of 24% in the prior year. Um, we expect our tax rate should probably be in the 23 to 25% range for this fiscal year. Net income increased by 522,000 or 34% to 2.1 million in the most recent quarter compared to a million five a year ago. On a per share basis, net income was 11 cents per diluted share in the first quarter compared to 9% the prior year. If you take off the rounding, uh, EPS was up 2.7 cents from the prior year as a percentage uh, fully diluted EPS was just up over 30%. EBITDA was 3.4 million this quarter, up 25% compared to 2.8 in the year ago quarter. Turning to the next slide, the slide shows our revenue on a quarterly basis from fiscal year 2016 to the first quarter of 20, illustrating both the historical quarterly growth patterns and the seasonality of the business. Seasonality can be best seen using the 2019 purple bars. Our third quarter is typically our strongest quarter with a decrease in revenue in the fourth quarter that coincides with slowdown in our clients purchasing in the summer months. Our first quarter this year again followed the upward trend and revenues were strong enough to approximate the third quarter of 19, our historically highest quarter for revenue. The next slide, we present income by quarter, which illustrates a consistent track record of increases, both year over year and sequentially through the first and third quarters, with the fourth quarter, as you said, typically the lightest in the year. As you can see, the patterns for quarterly revenue and quarterly income from operations have largely held true for a number of years. On slide 11, we see a similar pattern of net income with the third quarter typically being the strongest. We've isolated the impact of a $1.5 million deferred tax benefit in the second quarter of fiscal year 18, since it tends to skew the presentation without highlighting that difference. The next slide, uh, diluted earnings per share follows the same pattern and tracks with net income. As I mentioned earlier, fiscal 20 first quarter diluted earnings per share were 11 cents. Uh, reported two cents over the first quarter of the fiscal year. And then turning to EBITDA on slide 13, again, as expected, with seasonal patterns hold true with overall trends moving upward and typical seasonal seasonality between quarters. The next slide illustrates our revenue by region. We're a global business with the majority of our revenues in the Western Hemisphere or the Americas. Uh, approximately 67% were in North America and 68% uh, percent overall in the Americas. Asia and Europe each represent 16% total revenue for the quarter. Turning to slide, next slide. This uh, slide illustrates the strength of our cash position with the quarterly view of our cash balance, which continues to increase even in light of cash outflows for dividends and acquisition so over the last five years. Beginning with the first quarter of fiscal year 2017 on the far left, the blue bars at the bottom illustrate our consistent dividend payout, approximately 900,000 per fiscal quarter through fiscal 17. Then at the beginning of 18, our board increased the dividend payment to six cents a share, thereby returning approximately one to 1.1 million in cash to our shareholders quarterly uh, through the present quarter. Today, we announced that the board has again continued the six cent quarterly dividend and the next dividend payment date will be February 3rd. Continuing with the chart, the red bars represent cash used for acquisitions. Cash flows from operations have allowed us to invest our, for future growth through acquisitions with excess, with excess cash while still maintaining a healthy balance sheet. Our reinvestments through acquisitions total nearly 15 million over the last four to five fiscal years, while also returning more than 20 million to our shareholders through consistent cash dividend payments without taking on any borrowed debt. 
Looking at the next slide, uh, our cash balance uh, at the end of November was 12.6 million, which is up 10% compared to our fiscal year end, uh, 831.19. Our balance sheet is clearly stronger today than a year ago as a direct result of our increased earnings power, cash flow generation, and prudent allocation of capital. I will now turn the call back to you, Sean. Thank you, John. In summary, this was a great start to the new fiscal year, building on the accelerated growth we delivered in fiscal 2019. Demand for our solution remains strong, and we are adding to our team to meet this demand. In addition, we have opportunities outside the United States to further accelerate our profitable growth. I look forward to reporting on our further progress in the coming months. And with that, I'd like to turn it over and take any questions that you might have. Thank you, Sean. Once again, if you'd like to ask a question using your telephone, please use the hand raising icon on your control panel and be sure to enter the unique audio pin. Please hold on one second while I pull for the questions. As we pull for the questions, uh, I'll just go through some of the written questions. Uh, the first one is, can you explain the nature of the increase of interest income, ex increased interest rates, or different cash management products? John, I'll let you take that one. I am, um, I was muted there. Um, the interest income has come up, uh, has come up over the last years. We've held a little bit more in balances. Uh, we've taken a fairly conservative approach um, on investments at this point and and holding cash for potential <clears throat> potential uses that would help the company at this point. John, any other comments? None in this regard, no. Okay. Uh, the next question will be from Matt Hewitt of Craig Callum. Uh, this question will be live. Congratulations, gentlemen. Hi, uh, I am. Can you guys hear me? Yes, Matt. Yes. Okay. Congratulations on the strong start to the year. Uh, a couple questions for me. First of all, um, the accelerated consulting deals, maybe walk us through how the, those came about. Are you essentially pulling those forward from Q2, or is that a customer that came in and said, hey, we need this done this quarter? Um, maybe just a little explanation there. Sure. Uh, both are were existing uh, clients and and projects that uh, uh, were anticipated to run through multiple quarter, quarters going forward. And in each instance, the clients came to us, and um, you know we are you know limited in terms of our disclosure capability, but uh, driven by regulatory and internal. Uh, drug development uh, plans within their organizations uh, uh, requested uh, accelerated delivery of the results of the uh, efforts that, uh, that that we had signed up for, and uh, so uh, in a situation in which uh, we, we also don't want to push off uh, deadlines for the uh, projects that we were working on, uh, the team doubled up, if you will, and uh, brought forward uh, work effort that had been planned over multiple months going forward uh, into a short window of time. Time in uh, you know basically October November uh, time frame and uh, really uh, stood up and delivered results and uh, uh, support of, uh, of the client uh, I mean it speaks I think uh, in, in, in both uh, directions uh, a the importance of the work that we do and the critical nature that it uh, input it that it provides the client either in their own internal decision making or in the face of uh, response to the FDA in terms of queries and in, in and, 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 and interactions, uh, and also inward. Uh, very proud of the group uh, in terms of stepping up and recognizing <clears throat> the importance to the client and doing what was necessary in order to uh, fulfill the needs there. Um, very strong effort uh, effort by the team. Oh, that's great. Thank you. And then uh, you had a strong quarter of, of hiring, um, adding people at, at a number of the, the facilities. I'm just curious, how much do you have left to go yet this year from a hiring perspective? 
Well, you know, it's it, man, it's a it's it's an ongoing process. Uh, you know, if our expectations are to continue to grow uh, uh, consistently going forward, uh, recruiting is uh, is an every day, every week, every month, every quarter uh, endeavor. But uh, certainly this quarter, uh, especially in the Cognition Group out of Buffalo, we were able to uh, take advantage of uh, uh, opportunity in terms of there being candidates, good candidates out there that fit our needs, uh, and uh, uh, brought them in, and uh, uh, so uh, I, you know, as we look out over the next couple of quarters, uh, uh, a it's we're not dependent upon uh, that level of hiring to support our near-term needs. Uh, at the same time, should candidates uh, come forth that uh, that are that are keepers, uh, we will uh, not hesitate to to pursue them. Balancing balancing our capacity against uh, uh, the work effort that's in front of us. But, uh, you know, we have uh, over $6 million in backlog of projects uh, in that division. And uh, so uh, given the ramp up times it, ta it takes to bring a consultant on board and get them productive, uh, we're, we're certainly in a position where we've got uh, client work effort uh, available to assign new people to. Got it, Eric. Well, good luck, and as you continue to, to search for more uh, consultants, I guess the last question for me um, on the Rena Sim, and maybe, maybe how is that uh, product progressing, and when do you anticipate a launch? Thank you. Well, the Rena, Rena Sim is is there. We're 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 seeing uh, both uh, consulting revenues, consulting project opportunities, uh, as well as uh, uh, licensing opportunities uh, in in that space. So, uh, it's uh, it, it's starting to kick off uh, kick off now. That's great. Thank you, and congratulations again on the strong start to the year. Thanks, Matt. Thank you. Uh, the next question on the written questions is from Howard Halpern of Taglitch. Congratulations on the great quarter. Can you quantify the amount of accelerated revenue from the two clients in the quarter? And was that expected to occur in second quarter 2020? Yeah, Howard. Uh, you know, as as I, as I mentioned before, the, the the projects were in place and, and anticipated to flow over over multiple quarters. Uh, so some of that is drawing it in from from the second quarter. Uh, don't want to get into you know disclosing specific client uh, uh, revenue streams. We we without these two accelerations, uh, you know we we would have had a good quarter. It would have been in that 15 to 20 percent range, uh, not up to the 25 percent range. So that gives you a little bit of a feel. <clears throat> you know we're scrambling and 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 with the backlog that we have. Uh, it doesn't mean that uh, what came forward out of the second quarter into the first quarter can't be uh, filled in and, and replaced in the second quarter. Hence, our, our longer term uh, expectations of uh, the year being in at uh, 15 to 20 uh, percent is, is, is still our expectation. Thank you, Sean. Um, a follow up question from Howard. Does the first quarter 2020 results validate your prior investments to drive revenue growth? will also improve in maintaining the gross margin as well as for consulting services when demanded. Uh, yeah, if I understand the, the, the question, uh, I, I think, you know, uh, first quarter results, uh, accelerated projects uh, aside for the moment, uh, we've continued the uh, path that we initiated and start to come to fruition in in 2019 and in, in, in stepping up the, the the revenue growth and uh, uh, believe that has uh, been driven by you know our, our investments in several initiatives uh, both on the software side as well as the consulting side in terms of sales and marketing uh, tweaks and changes and investments that we're making. Um, hiring senior scientists that uh, have a little bit more business uh, development DNA uh, in their capability uh, and focusing the organization in, in, in terms of these goals. Uh, and uh, so uh, we uh, uh, are seeing that continue and have started the year uh, with great results in that regard. Thank you, Sean. Uh, and two other follow-ups from Howard. What is the significance of your collaboration agreement with Bayer AG? Uh, I, I think there's, you know, uh, several sort of uh, angles uh, on, on the collaboration there. Uh, one, uh, ADME predictor and the data mining 
uh, machine learning, I should say, uh, capabilities in that product uh, are recognized uh, uh, by uh, the industry, uh, in this case, uh, Bayer, uh, in terms of being their tool of choice uh, in uh, discovery uh, applications. And uh, uh, secondly, their uh, collaboration with us to um, uh, add this uh, utility to the product further uh, embeds uh, our software in a very significant client. Um, you see the renewal rates at 98% this quarter for our software business is very indicative. 98% uh, on fees is very indicative of uh, uh, the stickiness of our, of our software application uh, in the industry once it gets into our clients' hands. Uh, and this is uh, this this is the way w w one one of the ways in which that stickiness comes comes about. Thank you, Sean. And then the final question is, how are your efforts in Europe progressing? I know we announced we had, I believe, three uh, or four um, employees that are based there starting in the fourth quarter call. If you can just expand upon that uh, that growth as far as one of the areas that we've discussed as far as an opportunity for future growth going forward. Sure. Um... No, no, no. Fifth uh, uh, employee in Europe to announce this quarter. We uh, we 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 remain at the four uh, that we entered uh, the fiscal year with. Uh, obviously, those uh, uh, consultants uh, are uh, engaging both in terms of project work uh, uh, as well as uh, integrating themselves in terms of the community and in supporting the conference attendance and and, and relationship build with uh, with clients there in Europe. Uh, you know, I, I still believe that this is, uh, uh, strongly believe this is a, a tremendous opportunity for us down the road that uh, is, is yet to be paying dividends, but will in, uh, uh, in the near term. Well, thank you, everyone. It appears there's no further questions at this point. This concludes today's conference call and webinar. If you missed any part of today's presentation, the replay will be available on our website, simulationsdepthplus.com. Thank you and look forward to speaking with you in the second quarter. Thanks everyone.